thank you for uh, uh, inviting me again. And I want to thank my West Virginia friends. It's always great to see everybody and uh, to see uh, all the great progress that they're making uh, at the state level. It's just amazing to see what the IIJA has brought to our state. I'm sure you're seeing that, obviously, in all of your states and more to come. Uh, you know, when I think about um, bridge construction going up 79, I was going up that way the other day, or going over 64, where you're almost there, you're getting close on that one. And uh, all these massive projects that we see, hey Tom, that we see uh, all over uh, our state, uh, it, it really makes me feel good about the efforts that, I know you're going to be hearing from Senator Carper later, that Senator Carper and I uh, put forward on our um, uh, Environment and Public Works Committee. When we first conceived of the highway bill, which is obviously one of our biggest responsibilities in that committee, uh, we worked hard to compromise, to negotiate, to, to make sure that we had a robust uh, and something that satisfied all of our needs. And, and one of the things I really um, was adamant about was trying to preserve as much of the formula funding as we possibly can. This is, of course, we're talking to our West Virginia DOT every day to find out the effects of certain things. We were able to get a bit of a carve out for rural uh, projects, and uh, we know that's beginning to move. Um, we were also able to um, get some more money for bridges. Our little state has a lot of bridges, and uh, they're some of them not in the best shape, and some of them we want to be able to make sure that we can keep them so that they can be. And so the maintenance issue is really important as well. And so we ended up with a unanimous vote out of our committee over two years ago, because we're two and a half years almost into the infrastructure bill. So just to give you an example of that, as, you, as I look at it today when I see what's happening on Capitol Hill, that means Bernie Sanders and Jim Inhofe voted for the same bill. Um, that was quite an accomplishment. And we followed that up really with the wastewater and safe drinking water portion of the IIJA, which is absolutely critical too. And you see a lot of that, particularly in our state, it's going into the revolving funds where we're able to replace such, uh, build new, but also replace the, the aging infrastructure that we see. So I know that lots is going well uh, in our, in, uh, you know, 300 billion for our federal highways in that bill, 35% increase and I think uh, really I think good policy and uh, I have a great relationship with uh, Shailen Batt and I think he, as, as a former one of you all uh, I think we're lucky to have him uh, his door has always been open to us and certainly we're going to continue to do that I know there are issues with the discretionary programs I'm going to be honest with you I tried to fight as many of these increases or, in, or at least the creation of new ones as much as I could, but this was part of the negotiation uh, that Senator Carper and I reached. Um, it's the first time we've ever had a climate provisions in the highway bill, a whole separate portion of that bill. And you know, I'm a Republican, we always get cracked on that we're you know, anti-environment, we don't care about, care about the, the hills and the waters and, and the air, and, and I always point to that portion of the highway bill and go, that's not, that's, we all voted for this. We want to make sure as we're building our highways and rebuilding our infrastructure that we're doing it with the best techniques, the, the latest technologies, but also with a mind of how it's impacting our different uh, environments, whatever they may be. And, um, and so that is an important portion of it. The implementation uh, on the one federal decision, I know we're trying to work through that. That is something that we thought would be sort of a panacea of greatness. Um, I don't think it's quite panning out that way. I think it's rolling out a lot slower than what we thought. I'm not sure it has the clarity that it needs to have, but I mean, somehow we're gonna gotta shorten the time frame of what we're doing, and that's the goal of that. So when you saw the inflation reduction, or the, uh, not inflation reduction, everything has a name, the, the um, FRA, uh, Fiscal Responsibility Act that came out 
in March, where we got did get some permitting reform in that, we tried to wedge in the, for the one federal decision, which we did, into other projects that would be energy projects as well. But if we don't get it right here on the highway portion, we're not going to be able to feed our energy project projects into a into a per, or not a permitting but a regulating kind of stream and permitting stream that we were hoping to do with one federal decision. So anything that you can tell your congressmen and women and senators about that, I think, will be. Um, uh, very useful for us so that we can do the accountability and the oversight that we do in our committee to make sure we're getting it right and, we, and the full intent of what we wrote into that and what we thought we were going to get is what's being delivered because I think that's been a bit of a disappointment. Um, I know that the uh, we're going to continue to do oversight on the greenhouse gas uh, performance measure. I understand that's not a big issue for ASTO. I mean, they're, you're sort of neutral on it. It's different in different states. So my opinion on this, this was one of the issues that I was able to negotiate out of the bill where it had a stricter structure in there and many more uh, directives that might work for one state but not for another. And then uh, we've, we've been kind of concerned because Highways has come back in and tried to Im impose these mandates into uh, the bill that, that we negotiated out of the bill. I kind of got into it with, well, I got really into it with Secretary Buttigieg on the deal, and he goes, but this is really good. And I said, you're not the congressman. You know, you're not the senator. We make the law. You're supposed to implement the law. And, and so you see a lot of these things will end up getting hung up in court and everything else, which slows the process down. Uh, we are also looking at permitting reform still. Uh, as you know, we did get some permitting reform into the Fiscal Responsibility Act that I alluded to, the one federal decision, some timelines that were built in. We had a hard time figuring out what the punitive action could be if the federal government doesn't meet their own timelines, which they routinely do not do. You, you can tell me all about that. And, and so it's hard because what can you really do except withhold the money? So you withhold the money, nobody gets paid, nobody works, and then what happens? That doesn't seem to solve the problem. Uh, and so we're going to see some of these timelines that we built in, I think, are hopefully have a, a better effect in the permitting. But again, just to be honest with you, we've been disappointed away the administration has moved forward on our permitting reform piece. My piece uh, in that that uh, comes into the Environment and Public Works Committee is some judicial review. We had a pipeline in West Virginia, you might have heard about it, called the Mountain Valley Pipeline. It was 95% complete to carry our abundant resources of natural gas down to the southern part of the country to heat homes and everything else that you use natural gas for. And it was just hung up in court case after court case after court case. I mean, I think they went to the um, appeals court wow, nine times and kept getting turned back. The Biden administration, the Trump administration had issued permits, Fish and Wildlife, um, Corps of Engineers, EPA, DEP, they had all these permits. But every time it would go back to the court, it would just get sunk back in for some technicality. Um, by sheer will and miracle, we were able to get the completion of the Mountain Valley Pipeline into this fiscal responsibility ask last March. You probably read about it, but that's not the way to do business. You can't, I mean, th th this was a, uh, something that's extremely rare. And, and so what we what my portion of the EP, in EPW on the permitting reform would be the judicial reform piece. In other words, there has to be an end to the challenges on the uh, on the judicial uh, uh, challenges that we see. I mean, we're seeing this with quarter H in our in our uh, own state right now. It's just appeal after appeal. I did have to laugh when somebody two miles from the plan route, oh, a farmer who lives in the area just happened to see a bumblebee that was endangered. Um, we're wondering where that person was really from, but I don't think they were from the neighboring areas. And so we're hung up in an endangered species and some other issues as well. Which brings me to something else that was pointed out by Jimmy and his group, and you all may have this issue as well, is big issues with fish and wildlife on the permitting side. Uh, and uh, this is what we did. We, we, we had the uh, director come in with our regional director and our state director, 
uh, at my request. We had everybody, we had highways came in one day, then we, or one hour, and then we had EPW, or our um, EPA come in, our, our, I mean DEP, our state uh, environmental folks, and then we had our private stakeholders come in. And um, by the time we got to the private stakeholders, I had to tell them to back off because the fish and wildlife has just gotten beaten to death on unresponsiveness, um, inconsistencies from state to state, like Ohio would permit this, uh, West Virginia Fish and Wildlife wouldn't. And, and so a lot of it was communication, honestly. And so I think we've ironed out not everything here, but at least I think we're moving in the right direction. So a little added pressure on, on some of these agencies. They always say, every agency says, I don't have enough resources, I don't have enough resources. Well, when push comes to shove, Maybe they don't have enough resources, but they need to do better with some of the resources that they have. And when you hear that DEP or that Fish and Wildlife is not talking to the Corps of Engineers, that makes no sense. It's federal government to federal government. What, what, it's just holding people up. So we were able to work on some of that, uh, and I think you do have your uh, resource person at Fish and Wildlife, right? Not yet, okay. DEP got theirs, and the private entities got theirs. So sort of a shared responsibility. Well, we have to keep working on that. Um, so anyway, that's one of the issues I know that is, uh, is difficult for everybody, depending on the state. So I just want to say it is a real honor for me to work with my local folks, uh, my state folks. I'm really proud of what we're doing in West Virginia, and uh, we've got a lot more to do. Uh, we're obviously now looking at what we're going to, you know, we have to start looking at highway bills way in advance. Uh, we need to know what's working if some of these discretionary programs are not even getting rolled out yet or they're uh, moving, shifting uh, resources from one to the other. You know, this is the kind of information we need now so that when we come back up to reauthorize this program in the next two years, we know what and how we can do it better and better. So I am your partner on EPW. It's an honor to serve. Uh, I started in transportation over on the House side. I, I told my husband when I die, don't put, she loved infrastructure on her... Uh, <laughs> Uh, on my tombstone, but I do love infrastructure because it's uh, it's jobs, it's uh, ease of ease of travel, ease of cargo. Uh, it's America, you know. Good infrastructure is an American belief, and uh, and so I'm always proud to play that that part of it. I know there's issues with American made. We've heard a lot about that from a lot of different things on the water side as well. Uh, we're trying to work those issues out. I'm all for Made in America, but you know there are certain provisions in certain ways that that doesn't work every single part of the time, and why are we getting in the way of ourselves? And so we're going to work hard to try to ease those. So please know we have an open door. I have um, Brett here with me. Where's Brett? There he is over on my EPW. And, uh, and Peter as well. And you, many of you know Adam Tomlinson. I know my West Virginia folks know him very well. He's my staff director over there. He knows it all, and he'll tell you if you don't know. But uh, anyway, thank you all very much. I'm proud of you. I'm particularly proud of you guys, and thanks for the nice introduction. Thank you. Thank you.